Hello, everyone. I'm Jean-Claude at Beyond Mystic, and welcome to this deep woo-woo episode entitled The Quantum Woo with Mariam Hanin. This is part three. You can find her work at Mariam Hanin here on YouTube, at Honey Colony, of course, and on Telegram as Truth Lives Here. Let's give her a big warm welcome, Mariam. Welcome back. Hello, everyone. Hello, Jean-Claude. Hello, hello, hello. Just your friendly neighborhood, severe, multiple violator here <laughs> producing the shows. How are you, everyone? Thank you for joining us here on our third um, backup channel here on YouTube. Wait, <laughs> what happened to that? Let me bring it back. So, folks, if you just find us here again, uh, you probably noticed that we were... Um, terminated last week and this is our third uh, channel so please do <laughs> hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell all of our shows are indeed live all righty mariam what's new with you well i i was listening to the uh, rona origin hearing today and uh, it's very it's very interesting so yeah listening to that and um just also contending with my health issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I was going to say, I was going to ask you questions on the Rona origin, but we might get into trouble. <laughs> and I just right. got a brand new baby channel. <laughs> Give me at least a couple right. of days, but yeah, before you blow I, me up. <laughs> I would just say, I would suggest people to uh, go check it out. Listen. I would, I really would. I'm listening to it on the, for the second go because I care about details and I have to listen to things a couple of times. And earlier today I was listening to a hearing. I'm not sure on who was listening to the hearing, but it was a bunch of injured people. Um, you know, that on the heels of both of us hearing that our parents have gotten the jab. Right. Um. I have a link. I'm not sure if I can share this one here. Citizens Grand Jury, John Collins' testimony with Larry. Yeah. Clinton. Is that the one? Okay. Let me bring No, that. that's not that's not the one. This is an actual hearing with I mean parents and mothers oh, oh, oh. Okay. and people who are talking about being maimed. Um, mm -hmm. you know. So so but but I am a big fan of John Cullen and uh Jason well, Goodman. Yeah, let me bring that one, that link down anyways here. A few people had already sent it to me. It's in my queue to watch for tonight. I haven't watched it yet, but here you go, guys. Uh, please do go uh, check that out. And uh, Ed says, yeah, smash the likes for GC. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for the staying power. I'm not sure I have staying power. I have repeat power, but <laughs> staying, I don't know. Um, you know, yeah, thank you. And John says, hi, GC, uh, glad you violators are back. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian yeah. violators of that. Come on, man. <laughs> you got to give us um, a credit for being a staunch. A staunch yeah, well, if I can also say that uh, if you are then and you get a test because you get sick the threshold has been lowered now to 28 cycles and so they're they're not it's not a standard it's right. just so <clears throat> <laughs> yeah you can see folks here uh having these conversations are getting harder and harder and best we try and my god did i try on that last channel to not say anything you know other than maybe have videos about cats maybe i should have done that but still it wasn't enough no strike uh no warning nothing bye bye you're gone and so we're back. So thank you everyone for supporting us here on this show. And uh, we have a little bit of a surprise for you here tonight. So let me bring that up. Um, as you know, we've done quite a few shows, which are now deleted by YouTube, by the way, on this whole uh, multi-layer PSYOP regarding George Floyd. And this, of course, is the upcoming book by Mariam Henin. And now for your viewing pleasure, we have all three of these episodes into one package here on our Patreon show. We've priced it at $3.99, <laughs> the cup of coffee, really, seriously, for Mariam, and 100% of those proceeds do go to Mariam and her research and the upcoming book. So I encourage you to give that a try. If you've already seen one episode, maybe go, you can buy the episodes uh, independently, but if you haven't seen them yet, uh, please do go and support Mariam here by uh, purchasing this wonderful trilogy. And on there, there's really, really hot stuff that we weren't even able to say here on the YouTube channel, which was absolutely uh, crazy. So let me bring that link back down we to also, the end. Go ahead. We, sorry, we also um, premiered 
the trailer to the upcoming documentary that is going along with the book as a visual to illustrate some of the truths that were buried. And uh, just so people know what the, you know, what kind of research, like for instance, today, you can't see it, but I got something from Texas. I'm ordering files, I'm paying for documents, and uh, I would like to pay the editor who helped me realize this vision of mine. Like I, I have the line edit and she, she executed it amazingly. So yeah, this is, it's all out of pocket as I continue to have a literary agent, but we're looking for a courageous publisher to take on such a story of truth when you have such a strong mainstream narrative, narrative supremacy. Right. And Mariam, in terms of uh, tips here on maybe some other evidence uh, unfolding on this story, how can people reach you directly with that? So in the spirit of crowdsource the truth that um, Jason Goodman is, is why his reports are so excellent, that uh, anyone who has any information on the relationship or any information, but relationship between George and Derek, given that me posting a ad on Craigslist within an hour, I've posted it twice, has been flagged and removed for whatever reason. So many people in the inner circle of this event say that George and Derek did know each other. Some believe they knew each other five years when on paper they worked at El Nuevo for about a year. They were, well, George was unemployed at the time of, of this event. He's a three-time felon. Theories abound that maybe he threatened to blow the whistle or wanted money, uh, given that he was in need and out of his two jobs. Wow, fascinating. Of course, we won't get into too much of that here tonight, but thank you for that quick recap. And of course, folks, if you want to support Mariam, please do uh, go and check out that trilogy. It's available now on our pay-per-view. 100% again, of those proceeds go to Mariam. And if you want to give her a tip uh, tonight, you can use our PayPal uh, tip jar here. Let me bring up the link here. These will also go to Mariam, seeing as she no longer has her own PayPal. And that's a whole other story here, again, having to do with economic warfare against uh, truthers. So let me bring up that uh, tip as, as well. So there you go, folks. Okay. Tonight's episode, folks, is all about Maria. We're going to be exploring past lives and um, what else did we say? Memories? Karma. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Karma. Reincarnations. Reincarnations, uh -huh. yes. It's all linked. When I was, when I was uh, working at a club at it was a club in Montreal called 747. Oh, and I remember, do you remember that club? Yeah. Do you I remember the Fufoni Electric? Way, baby. Way. That. Way. I never visited Fufoni. I was, too, I don't, I never went there. Maybe because you're, you're a Quebecer. I'm so. not a Quebecer. What are you talking about? I'm a, <laughs> a Franco-Ontarien. No, I used to go to Montreal for these DJ competitions uh, when I was like 16 and 17. Wow, and I wasn't even of age yet to go into clubs, but I got into these clubs. Right. Me too. Companies. Metropolis. Yeah. Or Metropolis. Yeah. Metropolis. Yeah. <laughs> <The> metro. <laughs> All you Montrealers out there, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. So, so I was working at 747. I was the ticket chick. And um, I was writing a story, and it was titled Karma, That Bitch Doesn't Forget. Mm -hmm. and it, it was personifying karma and really exploring. I was using it as like a tongue-in-cheek, but really looking at how, how, karma, how, how karma works. And uh, at that time, was reading the Celestine Prophecy and uh, full of synergies and in regards to, to past lives that I feel we talked about this briefly off camera that I know some people that everything is like a past life. And then the danger of that is you're not living in this life. And so I always, I kind of, 
as a storyteller, I'm intrigued with what comes up. I'm interested in the sim symbols, but that's where the only one part woo is that I'm not full on woo woo where I'm, I'm letting this dictate. I'm just entertaining and open and seeing what resonates and, and what doesn't. It's a, if anything, it's just also, if you're doing past life, it's like a, an exercise in creativity almost or imagination and whether it's real or not you can still draw lessons and break patterns and and evolve i believe yeah and um speaking of past lives we have quantum healing of the soul uh, elisa herrera is in the chat here and uh, she's saying wow mariam you look so happy and of course oh, you did a regression oh. with her as well you want to talk about that here a little bit here seeing as sure. our other episode on this whole subject has now been nuked by youtube let's give it a little, I, I'm wearing a little these, sorry i'm wearing these magnetic it's so embarrassing these magnetic lashes and i don't know if it's like it's look very weird are you, doing anyway, the just, are you doing the Justin Trudeau thing on us? Is that what's happening here? No. Are my brows are going to melt? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. Sorry, I got distracted. No problem. Well, in, in regards to when I was thinking exactly to go with the imagination, it's exactly when I was with Elisa, just kind of thinking there was resistance and I didn't really know that we were going to do past life regression or because sometimes I just say yes to something on intuition if it feels good, but I don't necessarily like this editor. I just tired. I, I, I had not even looked at her work. It was just like, yep, yeah, yes. And um, so the same thing. So not knowing that we were going to do past life regression and then only in the aftermath or retrospectively seeing how some things totally make sense that came up and then it's always great when things don't make sense because it's something new and and sometimes it's like even if i wanted to i couldn't my subconscious make that up where where the hell did that come uh come from and i remember I yeah so i don't know if you want to comment on that which one the fact that you're gorgeous mariam by the <laughs> <way>. <laughs> oh not that one <laughs> Oh, uh, folks, okay, bear with us here. Becky and I are friends, and of course, we haven't done a show in a while, and, uh, you know, we're just rolling with the punches, and we thought we'd have some fun tonight, so I'm feeling a little bit giddy. I'm always excited when Becky is back on the show, so thank you, uh, Libby, for that comment. Uh, let me bring up um, Elisa's uh, website here, guys. If you're interested in this uh, quantum life uh, transformation and perhaps a regression of your own, please do go check it out at uh, quantumlifetransformations.com. Damn it. There you go. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, Mariam, okay, so let's start talking about that. You were this ticket chick, as you called it, and you were already thinking about these concepts of reincarnations and past lives. Now, you've done quite a few travels in your uh, day here doing all of these documentaries, including the one in Egypt. Maybe speak about that a little bit here, how that connects also, and that how that opened you up to the possibility uh, that you had been here on this plane before. Okay, I want to I just go back to my first memory of being six years old in classroom. And I remember an orange wooden desk and the light coming in from the left side. And it was a very simple phrase. And it was just that if I'm not here, I'll be somewhere else. And it was not about in being physically in the classroom. There was something that came to be to me about the spirit. Now think of how young I am. That's not necessarily where is that wisdom coming from? And so I joke that I'm an old spirit that has died young many times and that I feel that one of my lessons is I'm not scared of death. I, I'm scared of pain and I'm scared of aging. And maybe that's why also I think really early on, I, I said to myself, I'm like wine, I get better with age and I have gotten better with age, but I'm very aware. And, and of, of course, you know, it's like touches upon all of our vanity and just being like, I see this as my temple having almost died and I, I want to take care of it. And also think we've been given lies about aging and we're being slowly killed. Um, so anyway, so I had that that notion really early on. And then when I was 13 and I've talked about Mark and him being struck by uh, being hit by an 18 wheeler 
and uh, being raised Chris Christian and then really being broken open. And it was like an egg cracked. And then slowly after that, I met this like security guard. My, my parents were doing something and he introduced me to Om. And uh, then I was listening to things about near death experiences and trying to do out of body experience, uh, OBEs. And, and so it really like cracked me open. And I feel so lucky that I was inquisitive and asked these questions. And let's say that realization of, oh, I'm an old spirit that's died young. I mean, that's through self-inquiry and asking questions and um, really using these tools like past life regression to, to, to learn w what is your lesson here? Uh, being, I just realized with my near-death experience, if you don't learn now, it just, you know, it everybody knows, it gets louder and louder and louder. And then you're forced to contend with something if you don't listen to the messages. So I take that as also you're here, especially now, look at like in the, the Rona regime, like there's a reason why you signed up for this. So just wanting to be the best version of myself and using past lives to also early on when I had my near death experience, when I was working with that teacher, she was channeling my higher self and we did a, a past life regression and I, I looked, there was someone, I was seeing something and the person that I was viewing was not a good person. And then she asked me to look at them and look into their eyes. And then I realized, oh my God, that's me. That's me, that not good person. And uh, realizing that, oh yeah, I wasn't always a good person. And, and this is how we learn. Yeah, so that's a, a lot to say. How about yeah. you, Jean-Claude? This is a conversation so I interview with Mariam. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, to me, one of the biggest things as a kid, too, um, I remember going to church and listening to the priest. And um, you talked about having wisdom at a young age. I was looking at him, and he was saying, basically, you know, thank you for coming to our congregation. Of course, we here have all the answers you need. Don't go to the one across the street. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, Mom. Isn't it possible that the priest across the street is saying the exact same thing to not come to this one because they have all the answers, right? I said, how could that be? And she looked at me like, who are you? <laughs> Five or six years oh. old at the time. And I've always thought, you know, as I studied um, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, um, what was the name? No exit. No, Camus, Camus. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Camus. L'étranger de Camus. That's why, well, Sartre, too, is, is very interesting. But Camus, l'étranger, really got me thinking about these lives and how it's important to live this life. But also the disconnect, because he was saying, basically, do everything you can, eat everything, fuck everything you can, all that, like, enjoy life because it's so short. And I was like, wait, that's kind of cool. But at the same time, really, is that all there is? We're a flash in the pan. And I had trouble with reading that book. And I kept telling that to my teacher. And then you're like, well, once you go further and further into philosophy, you'll understand this idea of karma and reincarnation and the fact that it's been removed from a lot of our textbooks, at least here in the West. Yeah. So talk about yeah. that a little bit, uh, Mariam. Yeah, I remember learning early on in my teens that uh, they removed reincarnation in the Council of Constantinople, is it? And how that, because they wanted to control the people, and if the people th realize that they come back again and again, then there's no... Um, Supercarcons. Yeah, no, no, I would argue to say it doesn't really matter <laughs> regardless now, right? So, so, mm -hmm. so, and, and at the same time, it's like, you know, when you're saying don't be, let's say, Maybe it's someone's karma to be hedonistic that life. It, it's like you you have certain lessons to learn. And uh, that's why in America, from a long time, I'd say this is like a teenager country compared to Europe or others. Like this is their fate to go through this, uh, to, to wake up. And I, I still think that. So there's like karma of countries, karma of individuals, karma of families that they they come together i've certainly in my life done cord cuttings where it's like not seeing you next time ciao you know like that's it 
um, learn the lesson. And, and then also, I guess, if you're evolved enough, whatever that means to you, that uh, if you want to ascend or not come back, and that goes to that dig that I had done, uh, that I did on the on the light, like don't follow the light because mm -hmm. that's the trap to recycle you back. Yeah, yeah. so this is, yeah, the uh, 55, 53 AD, they condemned reincarnation. And yeah, it, it's um, when I had my near-death experience and became everything and nothing at the same time that that really puts things in in perspective and there's so many dimensions and of course people like you and me that are intuitive it's like we're, we're operating on more dimensions that people can see in this third dimension which is just a fraction of it right it's, it's it's too bad to be that arrogant i i remember if we do end up having bernard gunther who introduced me to um, hyperdimensional entities, but also has done this amazing documentary on, on UFOs or aliens. And it's just like, imagine us, we have this cattle that we're prodding and using for our own means. Of course, why not other, whether it's even the psychopaths or the whatever, the reptilians on this planet, but, right. but someone mining, harnessing us like, batteries well yeah i've said this on the show many times before and it gets me in trouble every single time but I'll, it bears repeating Why? we live on in this energy extraction matrix basically for all of the intents and purposes what mariam just said we are batteries uh slaves to that machine and there are ways to disconnect from that of course there are hints of that in the movie the matrix neo uh, the character we all we are all neo really <laughs> i'm mariam she's me and i'm you uh, the audience and you are me as well we all have to wake up to that fact so that's the first part the disconnection and then there's a question about how to re-empower yourself with your battery and this is also um last year where i got into some trouble about talking about kundalini or sexual energy or prama or chi whatever you want to call it all of these old practices that have been hidden from us on how to uh, increase create and increase that charge because your manifestations on this planet are uh, intrinsically related to how much energy you put to them right so there's a big learning there and this is one of the best kept secrets and in terms of um humanity's freedom this is perhaps the last big gate uh, that most people have to jump through is that understanding and this is not necessarily connected to the show but it is in a way because you're going to keep coming back here until you learn that, <laughs> right? And the uh, universe doesn't care if it takes you three minutes to learn a lesson or 3,000 lifetimes. Right. It'll give you what you need. And a lot of people say, oh, universe is, uh, is doing this to me. No, actually, it's doing this for you <laughs> because you've asked for those experiences in order to learn what it is you're supposed to learn in this lifetime. Let's get into that. Just, just that fundamental belief of this is happening for me and not against me, that changes your whole experience. And this year, more than anything, has shown me how our beliefs really do dictate our reality. You know, is it, What kind of existence do you want to live in? Do you want to be wearing two face diapers and a visor everywhere you go? Right. Or... You know, and, and, and again, if this was what it's said that it was, it would be different. But but just what is shaping your experience and how to really transcend victim stance? And that is really important. That I, I feel that is, is really important. It's, it's like just really sitting with yourself. And I, I am so I am thankful that I have this uh, wisdom this ancient wisdom that I, I feel the ties have been severed a little bit because I have been caught up in like third dimensional things to cover. And I think that the, the state of the world is because it's lacking uh, more rooted. Obviously religion hasn't done its done done. What has it done to bring wisdom forth uh, when, when we're just kind of uh, rejecting our ancestors and, these ancient practices of even like things like a dream circle. Right. You know, I just want, I want us to say that I, I told myself today, I'm just, things are just coming to me. 
I'm not, nothing has been planned other than thinking of some past lives to share. So please excuse that because. No, this is great. We're having a great conversation and folks are here to join us. And the uh, woke dealer Pinkarisa says, yeah, I just saw someone in their car uh, next to me today wearing, you know, uh, face diaper and gloves still. Yeah, apparently that person <laughs> didn't get the memo yet. Uh, but that's changing. I mean, Mariam, I had some people visit uh, one of my rental apartments uh, the other day. And like, these are the normies of the normies of the normies, like really, really normies. And still they were looking at me. I wasn't wearing a mask. And they, when they got there, they wore a mask. And then they kind of like felt embarrassed. And then they started taking their masks off. And the husband's like, oh, Jeanette, I don't know, you know. And she says, oh, wait, well, you know, like, come on. Like this, you know, this is crazy. It doesn't make sense anymore, all this stuff. And I'm like, right, right. You're on the right track, you know. Oh, yeah. anyways, it, it's just funny to see, like you just said how your thoughts make your reality. It's as easy as that. And uh, again, what you just said was important. This is not what they told us this was going to be a year ago. So we had to at least be cautious. You and I have talked about being cautious way back when, when we started this uh, whole ride until we knew and had more evidence. Now, a lot of evidence is already in there to the point now where uh, even doctors are being threatened with six months of prison in Australia for recommending alternative um things uh again in trying to adhere to their hippocratic oath to do no harm and of course if you look at all of these reports around the world there's a lot of harm being done uh by the introduction of this particular thing so that's the craziness that we're in now and my heart goes out to those doctors again your livelihood i know <laughs> your livelihood my livelihood it's all threatened uh by this big 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 um let's just call it a story uh right now a mob, uh, uh, just um, yeah. Th this is this is totalitarian. Just yeah. But if you are in Los Angelinos, attention all shoppers. If you've gotten your, if you're fully jabbed because of the Delta, you still have to mask up. Like that's yeah, that's what the headlines thing. today. They're saying the same thing here in Canada. Despite all the numbers going down and blah, 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 we're just not there yet. So, folks, keep going. Keep washing your hands. Keep social distancing. You know, all of that stuff. Even though 70 or 80% plus now are supposedly safe. So, imagine that. This was the article I was talking about here in, our, uh, in Australia. It's just absolutely mind-boggling to see all of this. I just, wow putting doctors in jail now for speaking their truth and for abiding by their oath not to do harm. And when you think about it, it's just crazy. All right, well, back to the topic. Yeah, like, <laughs> see, yeah, well, if we tied this all in, all of this, these lies and these severe mess, you know, it's it would be very easy to fall into victimization. I mean, I'm being victimized. I, I'm there. So what's the response? What's the attitude to whatever is happening to you? I think at this point, we all have family members that we've broken up with or lost, whether it's because of jab views or politics or whatever. This is divide and conquer. And uh, so what do we do with these lessons when we feel alienated or I feel like a freak or feel like you come from cat planet or what, what, uh, how do we go in deeper? Because being in LA, which I'm not anymore, but I, I was part of the woo woo scene and the new age scene. And I started seeing the toxicity or the, like, when I went to uh, California psychic school and, you know, like we are one, one, like, there's no difference. I am you, blah, blah, blah. And she, the teacher said, why do you want to be someone else? Do not mix your energy with someone else. Not, not in like, don't recognize your fellow human and, and the similarities, but just like, it was a different mentality of not wanting to, to join just because it's woo woo or, or like being in your own field. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. I mean, you have to be in your own field, even though we're all in this soup together. I'm me and you're you. And I have to be me because everybody else is taken, right? I have to go through my shit, my karma. And this is what it's all about. Talk about um, 
I want to go back to Egypt here. You and I have done a, quite a few shows on Egypt already, but go back to that experience of being in the pyramid and maybe bringing back an entity there with one of those little uh, statuettes and how that also connects perhaps with some of the past lives uh, that you yeah. had on your own, but also maybe that you got through some of these regressions. I'm sure there's a lot of new audience here that weren't here at the time we did that episode a couple months ago. I'm sure they'd be fascinated to hear about that. Yeah, I, I had to get assistance to try to figure out why on earth this, uh, well, what, what happened is, one, I had never been to Egypt. I'm, I'm uh, half Egyptian, and I saw an ad on Craigslist for a host on the Ark of the Covenant, and right away I, I said, that's me, they're looking for me. And uh, then fast forward, I'm, I'm there, and I had had the near-death experience so I had a metal rod in my leg and this was kind of the first job and I'm going back to the motherland and end up taking this Shepti and the Shepti is replaced or did replace the um, slaves that they buried alive. And then immediately it was like in the Brady Bunch episode of not, you know, you're not supposed to take the lava back away from Hawaii. And I started dreaming in Arabic and I heard Sibiha and Hatshepsut. And Hatshepsut was not a very good pharaoh. So I then, after picking up an entity and having an exorcism and then being in severe insomnia where I wasn't sleeping till 8.30 and 7 in the morning and then I had to wake up at 8.30. So it's like literally on one and a half hours of uh, sleep working on Catwoman on the reshoots on, on the Warner brother lot. And so I did, after finding out that there was an entity the, on, on one end, I had, I was told that I was a not very nice ruler and uh, was not, was not nice to the servants. And this was my karma. And then there was an, someone else who said that I had been buried alive and that I was taking back a piece of myself. So there you have two, they could both resonate. I certainly have enough karma with customer service that, and it resonates that I was probably like some, some bitch um, ruler, but because I feel in this life, I didn't come from money, but I feel like a sales self of, I've always felt like I've been told self of entitlement, like as if I was a ruler, but I'm like nothing. Um, but I never, any person who's over me, pick up the phone. Like, I don't, yeah, I I am deservant of whatever it is that I want. Right. Even having a low self, self-esteem. So that might be from a past life. And then let's say I did take back a part of myself because I was buried alive. That made sense, but I, I certainly don't have recollections of being uh, a pharaoh slave. M more so more so a some type of ruler in in Egypt and uh then I had memories with my with my ex um, who I think I was in that lifetime with and I remember we because we lived in Greece off and on building honey colony and I was in this beautiful village of 400 people in Cardamili in the Peloponnese and we were driving and we were having an argument and just one part we were taking a turn. I mean, it was just beautiful. Um, and I just felt a lot of anxiety and I just felt like he, he had killed me in that spot. And I remember we pulled over and, and uh, it was very dramatic, wow. but that was something that was one of the few times where it's been uh, like, it's re-triggered something of a past life. There's been other people like the man that directed me, Bruce Burgess, who directed me in the Ark of the Covenant movie, who also did the documentary Bloodline. He cast me, and, and as soon as I got off the airport in Heathrow and I saw him, I, it was just like, oh, where have you been? And we stayed up till like five in the, in the morning. It wasn't sexual at all. Well, maybe he, he was, he at one point was in love with me in this life, but it wasn't reciprocated, but it was like a really deep connection. And there's some people that I've know I've known before, and some people things like um, 
memories have come up and it makes sense, but I didn't know necessarily like have a strong feeling. Yeah. I, I knew you before. Right now I've had a feeling that I knew you before the first time I heard your voice. I'm like, Oh, I know this person and this whole connection with Greece. Also, I have many dreams uh, of past lives there and same thing with Egypt. You know, what's funny too, you were mentioning about, you know, maybe being uh, some type of, I don't want to say royalty, but I, I know what you meant. And for me yeah. as a kid too, um, you know, I had to go put out the cr trash, you know, it's just like I had chores like every other kid has. And I kept saying to my mom, why the hell do I have to do this? Where, where, where did all my slaves go? And my mom would look at me, what the hell are you talking about? Like I used to have people to do this stuff. Why am I doing this stuff here? I couldn't understand. And my parents were just like, where That's did awesome. from? Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> Let me bring this up here. Uh, I believe this one is, uh, well, this is uh, the five-step protocol to a long life. But where is this picture taken? Is this Greece, this one? No, that's Costa Rica. Oh, that's Costa Rica. That's the other one. Is Greece, one. But this is Costa Rica. Okay. Do you want to talk about this one a little bit? We've never talked about this before on the show. I just want to touch upon when when we met uh, f first that it, okay. for me I was I was in the jungle and you reached out to me and you had seen me on Carrie Cassidy and I hadn't tapped into you I don't know what I was doing and then you were hearing me on a meta level and it wasn't like you know who the fuck is this guy or this is really weird I was like then I you asked me a question and I tapped in and I'm like, Oh, we've known each other before. And it was like a very clear, and maybe it is because of the Montreal thing, but there's like just a familiarity yeah. and uh, there's, it's very few, especially now that you, you just have a, a familiarity, like a recognition of each other's spirits that yeah. way extends, a way extends like you can do it be, before a screen and especially if like now that i realize i'm clear audience um that you can just infer i pick up a lot from the voice but it's just basically it's beyond the third dimension this kind of knowing yeah yeah absolutely yeah. I've had many stories over the last, you know, 12 years or so, and I've explained them on the show before. But when uh, I first connected with you as well, and I heard that voice, that frequency, most of the shows I listen to, I listen to them on 2.0. Like I, I, I consume a lot of data, but I just close my eyes and I listen. I listen to the voice. That's where I get, yeah. you know, all the text that you're saying, but everything, the subtext, that's where I get it from. And when I heard you the first time too, I was like, oh, I know this person. I have known this person for a long time. So I, I was eager to get in contact with you and, and to reconnect them. I, I haven't looked back though. We, we've been doing so many things together and you and I are so crazy busy doing all these shows, being deleted, having to recreate everything, being, you know, how it goes. And sometimes I think, man, wouldn't it be just great for you and me to go to Egypt or go somewhere in Greece, go in a temple somewhere and just boom, the whole, like, I could just see the whole visions coming back like really, really quick. And I think part of what's happening right now too is to exactly that, prevent us, people who are just reconnecting now and piecing all of these um, pieces of the puzzle together uh, from doing exactly that. Because when we travel around the world and we go to these megalithic sites or, uh, or, or, or uh, archaeological sites or even ley lines to some extent, you get keys. You get those oh, yeah. uh, DNA activation, those rememberings. And yeah. when you're with people who you've been with maybe thousands of years ago, I mean, magic happens. I, I had a few experiences like that in Sedona and other crazy places around the world yeah. already. And and that's what Sarah and I were saying the other day. Like the thing we miss most about this year is not traveling. We are just mm -hmm. like we're hungry yeah. to travel and to connect with people, connect with places. And that right now is still a problem. At least here in Canada, it's still a big problem. <laughs> oh man. No, I, I hear you. I was a digital nomad and uh I look back and, and I see how the universe took my apartment away, you know, I lost it to mold and I love that apartment, but it was making me sick. But I left like December, 2019. And I had also said to myself, I, I, I would love it if someone said, I want to kidnap you. And then right. Zach said, can I kidnap you? And uh, so I just feel like, look, like the universe helped me not 
not be have so much stuff and be, be able to move but now my i'm i'm really missing like a home i wish i had a place where it's mine and i can sublet it legally and then travel but now everything is so complicated and again that's why people go and get but um right. that, it's like to do that i mean i did that so i can travel it's that it just shows how stupid this is but i miss that i miss that too when you said you know go to egypt like i kind of vowed i would never go to egypt again but if someone was like miriam let's go back let's go to greece you know you'd be happy to have me because i i i'm a great resource there and i miss right. it that feels like where my heart is is greece and i would go back to ikaria which is very viking and i also had like past life um, there it's it's like these people are they're they're in the blue zone. It's a blue zone where they live in the eighties, nineties, and there's something preserved. And because it's like this Viking, um, no easy access, they've become re very resourceful. And there was something just very ancient, and oh, so my my soul just misses that. Like as much as I love the jungle and everything, like yeah, Greece. When I went there, I was like. Why isn't the whole world in Greece? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, man. I've had dreams since I was a kid of living in those times, uh, the olive oil, the feta cheese, the wine, the dancing. As soon as I was, okay, listen to this. When I was, I was at 13, probably 13 or 14, um, I used to be, um, uh, I call it, newspaper boy. I used to have a paper route as a kid, and that's how I would, you know, pay for little things. And um, uh, at the time, I was living in the Quebec uh, province. And um, for some reason, the government just decided that uh, paper boys were like um, child, uh, not slavery, what do you call it? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, what's the word? Labor. Child yeah, child labor, forced child labor, something like that. So they decided no more uh, kids, uh, paper boy uh, thing. They had to, you had to be an adult. So I'm like, oh, I lost my my paper routes, and at that wow. time, uh, like I was the dawn of paper routes. Like I have said, I had seven paper routes. I was really good, and I accumulated all my territory. And then I I cut it up. I took all the apartment buildings for myself because those were the easiest ones. And then I sublet the routes to everybody else. Anyways, so at some point, wow. the entrepreneur side of me, right? And anyways, at some point, of course, this all came to a, to a screeching halt because the government said, no, no, no more uh, child labor. So I'm like, oh, I needed to find another job. And a friend of mine was a busboy at this restaurant called Le Vieux du Lut. <laughs> Greek restaurant, right? I had never been, didn't know anything about all that. And you Which know, one? I, Which one? The one in Gatineau. They had like, I don't know, 20 or 40 franchises right. in Quebec at the time. And it was pretty big. But anyways, this one was in Gatineau. And uh, anyways, I start working there. And I start listening to this music. They had that same tape playing like, you know, the, whole, the whole night, right? Yeah. And I was like, I, every night I'd go back home and then have these crazy dreams uh, about Greece and how I was connected to that. And all the owners, of course, at that time, they were all Greek. And uh, they thought I was Greek. Like, they loved me. I was like, they, I they could had see all you working there so clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still pictures yeah. on the wall. Uh, Maybe not in the, uh, the Gatno one, but in the Elmer one of all these old, they, they, I don't know how they called it. But anyways, it was like the the Rat Pack in the days of the, you know, the waiters that were there. Those were good days. Um, <laughs> anyways, good good memories days. there. But it brought me back to this whole culture, the food, the wines, the taste, the smells, the, the, the music, all of that stuff. And it just, it, it connected to me, like resonated really hard that I was connected to this. And I started having these dreams um, and, and going deeper and deeper and all of that. So big fascination there. Again, travel, you and I, anytime. <laughs> when all this I, craziness is done, I'll, I, I'll kidnap I totally you agree. and I'll bring you to Santorini or something for, for a week. That, that's two. the thing. I don't want to go to Mykonos or Santorini. Like, no? No? I, I, I just, ugh, it's just everybody. It's like there's 3,000 islands. I'm going to go to the most touristic included one or why don't I personally, we i just i want to go, back go to, to the Ikaria. temple uh the, the temple of delphi yeah go there? I'd go there. you could drive yeah. from athens i like yeah. the last time i went i drove myself in foreign country four hours into athens and i couldn't stay in athens but like, like 
you, you share your memories and and I grew up with Greeks and uh, they'd go to to class and they'd go la tele mesa and I'd just be like I wish I could go and learn Greek but my father won't let me because he doesn't understand the language so right. I just absorbed it and learned it because my mom that's how what she spoke to my yaya to my grandmother and to my right. aunts and so I mean I I I would go I don't know how it is in Greece right now Mm. Uh, this uh, this island is um, there's retreats. I wanted to move there too. It's beautiful. I was fascinated by the Greek goddess and of course the Greek girls at that age. You know, I was a teenager working at a restaurant, and so the first thing I learned uh, in Greece was polyomorphy copella, like you're a beautiful girl. <laughs> like I wanted to impress all the Greek girls at the restaurant, of course. All right, enough about me. Let's yeah. bring up our PayPal tip jar here. Thank you so much, uh, Jim Montgomery. Appreciate it. He says, Median is Jim. a champion Thank of you. truth. Oh, he's a question. Did you decide on Costa Rica or Florida? Well, Jim, you know, I, I'm, they scheduled me to have a surgery in September and I'm lucky that they've now pushed it to July 30th, but I'm very sad because I don't want to spend my summer in, in San Francisco. Um, but I have to take care of this health issue, which is a fibroid and a cyst. And, you know, I'm sorry if it's TMI, but I've been bleeding for like 30 days off and on and i'm really like depleted and i have work to do and it's i'm just not well right now <laughs> so i don't know i i uh i found out that my friend who i thought escaped to florida is still here and now he's telling me that he's afraid to go to florida because oh, of the no. mosquitoes <laughs> but i'm like oh my god maybe i can like we can plan it again because i have to be honest like i ruminate and every morning i open my eyes and i'm like i just need to get out of here please god please let me get out of here it's not a thriving environment for mimi i can um, imagine it, man my heart goes out to you um oh here's another one here from let me bring this up hold on a second here am i jammed no oh, that worked okay uh susan cano thank you so much and she thank says you. thank you uh, for loving us uh Receptive space, Jean Claude and Guest Marina. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's awesome. I saw a few more, so let me try to acknowledge all of them here. Uh, Richard Zerk, he didn't leave a message, but thank you so much. That's a great donation. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And all of these are going to uh, Marianne tonight for her work and also uh, for this surgery and hopefully uh, get her settled here uh, either in Costa Rica or in Florida. Um, post haste. So thank you so much everyone for that. Uh, Jenny says, okay, I wanted to bring it up because I, you said something earlier on the screen and I said, oh yeah, like I know you. And uh, Jenny, uh, Jenny Alisa says, we may have all known each other before I resonate with so many of you. That is absolutely the case for me as well. Uh, and that's what's all always unfortunate when YouTube deletes the account is because I miss you guys. <laughs> you know, we're back up to 12,000, but we were at 40,000 something uh, leading up to 50,000 just a couple of days ago. And I'm like, where's my tribe? Come back, guys. I love this, you know, yeah. the sharing and the Me frequency and, and, and just all the love in the chat. You guys are amazing. Jenny, you're amazing. Thank you, everyone. Jim, also like John, all the moderators here, you guys do a fabulous job. Um, really couldn't do it uh, without you. So thank you. I love you, all of you guys. Uh, John says, JC, uh, I too had many paper routes. Oh yeah, and so, uh, some of them, okay, cool. I was eight when I started. Yeah, that's about right. And maybe eight, nine to 13, I think. Uh, I did this for many years. And you know what? I still have dreams sometimes. I, like I, <laughs> I'm older now, I won't say what my age is, but I wake up, oh my God, I forgot my paper route today. Wow. <laughs> I'm all stressed that I forgot, you know, that house at the corner of the street that was wow. always too far, I didn't want to go to. Like, I still feel responsible, like, oh That's shit. That's very interesting, <laughs> Jean Claude. That's I forgot their paper. I'm like, uh. That's the same thing with here on the show. I'm a DJ, of course, I was a DJ in a bar. And for me, dead air is just like, if for me, half a second is like- uh, Really? Nice oh yeah yeah so i always dreamt um you know and had um not i guess stage fright when i was mixing and performing you know like for a club and uh, i was uh thought or i was always afraid that i would pick up the needle from the record that was live and go to dead air like that was the wow. like the scariest thing for me never happened but i was always worried you know when i'd pick up the, the needle make sure that's not the one that's playing live because you know the whole dance floor would go Ooh, there's no music what the heck happened <laughs> And so I have this same weird fear here 
when there's dead space on my show, I just don't like it. That's why I'm always prepared on everything I do so that we keep it rolling. Anyways, yeah. So I, I think it's good. To, I mean, of course, it's good to be prepared, and it come. It shows that you're prepared. You're like a seamless maestro. Uh, at the same time, it's. I think with friends, it's okay to have some some quiet time. Well, yeah, like sitting on the couch or a fireplace. Yeah. I mean, quiet smart. moments, oh, sorry. Right, right, right. Here in the show, I don't know. I just like to keep things moving. Because uh, uh, for myself, when I watch YouTube videos, again, I told you I watch them on 2.0. Uh, I'd probably watch them on four times speed if I could. So I, I like, okay, just get to the point. You know, So I always try. I, I, I'm cognizant of, of people watching the show. Like, they, you know, they came here to learn something. They don't want a dead Absolutely. space. Absolutely. So. Of, yeah. Yes, we want to offer something. So I want to see if if, we've, if there's any any other nooks and crannies to explore with with past with past lives and and uh, and karma. That again, um, I, I'm wondering how many of the people in the audience have done that. What what's the what's the purpose ultimately? to do past life, to, to see how we are eternal. I I remember working with this woman who was channeling my higher self and um, I said something in, in a class and I was like, after my accident, I had to regain my confidence to, to speak in front of people. It really is like starting from, from scratch. And I had said something in a writing class and then I felt really embarrassed. And she told me, you, you never know what seeds you're planting and sometimes things come out and uh so what's the how do i connect that to to uh, to past lives that if something comes up a um, past life image like what can you learn from that ultimately again it's all about self inquiry because we don't take any any of this with us but i do believe that we keep on coming back here to learn lessons that are tailored to the person and that's why it's easy to judge others but we're all holding space and we all serve a purpose whether it's the garbage person or the monk as long as you realize your your purpose which is one of the keys to longevity which is in inagi in in japanese purpose so what 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 brings you, what turns you on and, and makes you alive? And how can we look at ourselves in the mirror and do shadow work to be better people? Because obviously people, what's the saying? People who are hurt, hurt others or something like that. And I certainly see days where I feel like, I, where I feel like I'm hurting, that I'm not showing, I'm not my best self, right? And when I'm in service or when I, I take myself out of of myself of being self absorbed, for instance. Then uh, you you're open to other things. So again, this is all about self awareness. Oh, I know I have a tendency to come across like this. Landmark helped me with that, although I, I did not drink the Kool Aid, and I have an aversion to anything cult like or any like even like if it's a group of people. I remember going to a workshop. I think it was a pagan workshop, and the teacher who she's well known, was like, let's all pretend to be elephants. And I'm not pretending, I'm not going to join in a bunch of people and just mimic stuff. I have an allergic reaction. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not into those uh, so much. I'm more of a self, um, uh, express traveler like i'm on my own path i understand that but i do a lot of this introspection as you said but always this uh, remise en question in french uh, i've been doing that since i was a kid and my parents would it would drive them crazy uh, because I sometimes i would go overboard and just overthink everything right is it well, like a post-mortem analysis remise en, en... right to revamp yeah, well, in Kung Fu, there's Laos time is a, one of the term. And basically it means go back and look at what you learned last week. If it still stands, hold it. If it doesn't, chuck it and then put some new stuff in. So it's always bringing you, and like Jenny is saying on the screen, move that needle forward every day. You can't move the needle forward if you know what you know and you stop learning, right? If you think, okay, you're all good and you're all set in your mentality and what you think you know, uh, you're not going to grow. And so as a kid, I always had this instinct of 
challenging everything I thought I knew. And it would drive my teachers bonkers. It would drive my parents bonkers. Uh, you know, and I was asked all these questions. And sometimes they were right. They would say, okay, JC, I think you got this. <laughs> I mean, you're very cerebral. You're very analytical. And I think you've got this. Uh, you know, maybe you can stand on this plank for a while. And I've always said that to people standing on planks to me that was always important because we walk through life most of the people are walking through life whether they know it or not on lies so the planks they're working on are actually not solid foundations they're based on because somebody said so but it's never been verified but that's yeah. what you've been taught since you were a kid and so i understood quickly uh, and I, why i'm not sure but as a kid and again maybe from that wisdom from past lives that I had to walk through this life very deliberately and I had to make sure that the planks underneath me were solid. And that meant that I had to question everything, not just official them and all that, of course, that's what I do here and that's why I get in trouble, but I had to question myself too and everything that I thought I knew. And so I'm curious if the other audience, yeah, I'm curious if other people in the audience have that same kind of weird thing about making sure they're walking on solid planks. Because to me, I'm like, I can't be me if I'm walking a fake walk, if I'm walking on shit that's not true, what the hell's the point of me walking forward in this life? And, and, right. and, and maybe affecting and manifesting in that vein where I'm being basically a servant to somebody else's master. So I've always walked to my own beat and I've always, maybe sometimes slower, but most of the times a hell of a lot faster than anybody else in my school or you know, in, in my career, because I was always being propelled by these stronger planks. So I hope I hope that makes sense in the context here, and the people can can enjoy that. Uh, Elisa Wright, thank you so much in the PayPal tip jar, and she says, uh, "Thank you for being such amazing people." Thank you, Elisa. I appreciate thank that. You. Absolutely nice, beautiful. Uh, and again, if you're just joining us um, tonight's episode here, we're trying to raise a few uh, funds here for Marianne for many, many reasons. <laughs> the least of which is all the job uh, and the work she's doing investigating uh, this reality, ensuring that information to empower all of you, and of course, uh, being uh, demonetized and uh, harassed for doing that. So folks, if you can find it in your heart um, to buy her a little coffee here in the PayPal tip jar tonight, absolutely, thank you. And also, if you want to check this one out, let me see if I can bring this back on. Buy me screen. coffee? I won't be using your funds for coffee. <laughs> I am. I make my own bulletproof, um, mold-free, make- um, pesticide-free coffee. Oh, well, that's, Nazi. that's amazing. I just meant generally speaking. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> Jar know. related. I know. Uh, but folks, if you don't want to buy your coffee, you can also uh, give it a try here. We've just packaged now the three episodes of the George Floyd <laughs> A multi-layered psyop. This is the upcoming book from Mariam Hanin. Quite a bit of research in there, and never seen uh, before footage uh, that Mariam has uncovered in all of these investigations. And we've priced this um, as best we could here to get all of this information to you at a low, low price. So at three ninety nine, you get all three episodes here, and a hundred percent of those proceeds uh, go to Mariam and her research, and hopefully to relocate her as well to the place of her choosing outside of China. California. <laughs> so, yeah. Mariam, we're 57 minutes in. Anything else you wanted to share with respect to incarnation, past lives, maybe how they connect now, or maybe words of advice for the audience here who are just tuning in perhaps to their reality of past lives and how this, their physical meat sack, is um, absolutely not who they are. I do have a few things to say. One about meat sacks. I I, uh, I went to the LA coroner's office. I've always been fascinated with death. My first story that I pitched to the Montreal Gazette, Gazette was about the um, rising rates of cremation. And I went to the crema- crematorium at Mount Royal and went down and saw this old man that was manning the retorts, which is the ovens and really kind of faced death. And I remember a bucket of metal things. And I saw this big ball and like this very clunky. And I I picked it up. I'm like, what's this? And he said, "Um, it's a a hip joint. And I I thought to myself, oh my God, I would never want to have metal inside of my body. You know, flash forward to me getting hit by a a car and having a 13-inch 
titanium rod inside of my body. So <laughs> what can I infer from that? I, I think if you're starting a path of exploring past lives, I, I think all of it, like, don't put too much weight. Like I've said, I've have friends that everything is a past life. And then it's kind of um, abstract for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, rather than being grounded. So you can use it to teach yourself about a pattern that you want to break or something or to overcome some trauma that, uh, and I think also in this life, like I was really scared of red cars and I would joke, my girl, my friends would like, no, I'm not getting into, you have a red car. I'm not getting into it. If I rent a car, I'm not going to get rent a red car. And then when I was 29 at the height of my Saturn return, I got hit by a red car. And so I joke, I always thought I'd be in the car, not under it. Um, so you never know like premonitions or things that can come to you. So that would be my my uh, my advice. I, I do remember it as far as I was in Hawaii and uh, this was after the accident and I, I got a vision of being Irish like I saw I was like orange freckles in a in a somewhere in Ireland and then I saw myself in a hospital and I saw committing suicide and I've always like I've I've always had a fascination with the intersection between spiritual awakening and mental breakdown because I had a friend that was going into her spiritual awakening and then was basically committed suicide in in this life so just always I'm just fascinated with what they did with people that were mentally ill who says someone's mentally ill just because they hear voices and, and all of that and maybe it's because in a past life I, I was not all there mm-hmm well, <laughs> I hear voices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. People. <laughs> right. Somebody in the chat said earlier, JC, if you're mixing music in this life, you were practicing alchemy in the past. I absolutely do believe that. I think that was Astro Sam. I forgot. Uh, it just scrolled off of my screen here, but thank you for that. And yeah, I feel I'm doing the same thing on this show. I'm mixing people together. I'm mixing all of this information up and we're making basically a new way of understanding things. And this is why I bring people with such diverse opinions also. It's to push that needle again, of what I think I know, to be challenged. And I hope you guys appreciate that. I get in trouble sometimes. People's like, don't bring this person on the show. They talk about, you know, their, their opinion is different than that one. I'm like, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> Aren't we all supposed to be adults here and trying to grow? That's a big part of the reincarnation. Also, I really like throwing out the baby with the bathwater. It's like you can you know, not like certain things of that person or not agree with their politics, but you like this other aspect. And, and can't you make that distinction and not just chuck a whole thing? Like, can't you, again, beliefs, like, are you seeing the world through a negative lens? Like, I know when I'm having negative days, if, if, if like I'm super hormonal and I'm like, it's painting. Like the other day I was watching, there's a Karate Kid series. It's really good. Did you hear? Wax. It's like it's capitalizing. Wax off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> My kids watch this. Rough, it's yeah. Ralph Macho. It's the it's the same actors. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I was watching it, and then I was like tearing, and I'm like, "Oh, Mary, I'm like, this is hormonal. You must be about to bleed again." Um, so just being aware that we are chemicals, not to to be the observer. Are you able to look at yourself and see the movie not in a disassociated, not taking a responsibility kind of way. But I think that's what makes me also a good writer, that I can sit here and look at the characters objectively and play devil's advocate as a Gemini moon. So again, I like my resounding self-inquiry, mindfulness, kindness, just what did what did I what can I do differently? Or if I'm wanting something from someone, what? How am I not doing that in a way? Right. And and the narcs in your life, they can be great teachers, and there's no shortage of them. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them around and they're acting even more crazy now uh, this year. Absolutely fascinating. I had this show with uh, Jay Widener this afternoon on this dystopian timeline. And he was reporting that a lot of his um, friends and insiders who work in Hollywood are reporting the fact that a lot of people are going absolutely insane. Uh, Top-notch actors, you know, the whole set, the crews, and it's just creating huge delays in production and huge cost overlays. And drama. Yeah, drama. drama drama. Yeah, a lot of weird stuff happening. And, of course, that's why <laughs> I'm doing this show and where marie and I are just having this nice little chat with you guys here tonight. Just it's a little chill as an episode. Yeah. But it's, it's deep it's okay. and it's connected and it's it's – bringing this uh, family together. So thank you so much, everyone, uh, for joining us here tonight. Please do, if you're just finding me again here uh, on my third backup channel, uh, please do uh, subscribe and hit that uh, notification bell as well. And I invite you to also go check out Mariam here at Mariam. Yes, please. I just made 3,000. Woohoo! <laughs> I think you have way more than that. It's funny. In the last one that just got uh, pulled, also, I had a few psychics. I'm like, they're like, JC, dude, you have way more than that many subscribers. They're, they're messing with you. I'm like, I know. You know what's crazy, too? I just, just started this channel here the other day. And of course, I've been nuked because I have severe multiple violation and because my content is also inappropriate for advertisers. I can never monetize here again. But mm -hmm. yet, my trailer on my YouTube channel has has an advert on it. It's going 100% to YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's perfectly fine for them to put ads yeah. on now my Now they show. said they can make money off of you. Even even though you can't make money off of your contact, we can. Yeah, content. exactly. No, 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 JC, you can't feed your kids. No, no, no. But we're going to run ads and rape you. <laughs> okay. That's the game. Uh, so, folks, on that note, if you can and you wish to support me as well, you can find me here on uh, Patreon at patreon.com forward slash beyond mystic. There you're looking for the insider access pass that gives you access uh, to the conversation, uh, to the great folks here in the community in uh, our Patreon. But it also enables you to steer and direct our future shows as we produce them. And finally, it gives you access to the total library here. Um, of pay-per-view episodes and this is where thank god we have this private server now again seeing as we're being um uh, deleted everywhere here at least we have control over the content and we continue uh to produce amazing amazing uncensored stuff for you guys so if you're liking those shows uh and you're buying a lot of these episodes already perhaps now is the time if you want to help me out uh to pull that trigger and become an insider access pass member really appreciate that and of course you can help Mariam here uh, by buying some of these beautiful products here at Honey Colony. Mariam, talk about that a little bit. So Honey Colony has been around since 2011 and is a phoenix that is an anomaly of its just, I don't even know how we're still around given that it's an online company and we've been capped. So just to show from, I use the example from 2015 to 2016. Imagine as an entrepreneur going from 200,000 in sales to a million, all on your own without any VC investment, just your hard work. And then yeah. next thing you know, it's now as they've slashed, slashed the earnings. And uh, because I can't get the reach with Facebook, Google ads just banned us. And uh, we never anticipated this type of techno fascism. I would have, you know, to, to, we thought in the principles of what Google told us, for instance, with organic searches that are no more. So it's really reliant on our newsletter, on our affiliates such as Jean Claude. But you can read the articles, and it speaks for itself. The quality, just. Excellent made. I use everything I have on my side. I use the silver, the hydra, the maybe not the lube right now, but uh, usually. So, yeah, I invite you. And then I would say, like today, I was interviewed to speak about as an expert on CBD since I've been selling it since 2016 before Kim Kardashian and everyone and their mother because I'm in the future. So, right. we don't get traffic to simply transformative because of all the attacks but ours is liposomal and organic with chinese herbs there's nothing like it on the market and you can use beyond mystic and get 
and get 15% off, I believe. Um, so we have a uh, liposomal CBD and a tincture, a tincture and a topical one that are have beautiful ingre ingredients. I want to, yeah, so please, yes, do support. Excuse me. It, I say a phoenix because given all the, I, I just always pull a rabbit out of my booty somehow. And um, to, to just, you know, take no, don't take no for an answer. But for, for instance, many people know that the day of the deadly insurrection, I lost my processor for five months. Imagine not being able to make money for five months. You've got your goods. You, you, you've, you're ready to go, but they won't let you. Right. That's what I and, say. Can't play the game anymore. We don't like you. Apparently, that's what it's become. Thank so you, Jim. For, for, yeah, Jim, thank you for that uh, beautiful comment. And thank you, everyone, for supporting us. Thank you for all those uh, PayPal donations. Thank you for the Patreon members. Because, again, without you, we don't yeah. You've just seen the proof again last week. <laughs> without you guys, we don't exist. We couldn't do this without you guys. So thank you, everyone, for yeah, all your support. I, really appreciate it. And Mariam, um, we, what's the best way to follow your work as you're doing uh, the investigative reporting right now? Is it still here on Telegram, or do you want people to follow you on your Twitter? I think on Twitter. I just want to say thank you for everyone. I, I am a hard worker bee, and uh, your Donations will, will help me in my pursuit of the truth. I want to say that I did share my trailer that uh, is in the trilogy with Bill Maher, and he told me to send him my documentary when it's complete. So that's very exciting because my dream has been to go on Bill Maher and um, he supported Vanishing of the Bees, and we had agreed I'd be on the show to sell, to talk about the honeybees, but then the Rona hit, and I also, you know, delved into Orange Man, and we, you know, anyone who watches Bill Maher knows his views, but he is, he, he supports free speech, he, he sees what's happening with the techno, technocratic, these um, companies and censorship, so, so if people can follow me on Twitter, I'm on Truth Lives Here. I want to say thank you, Jean-Claude, for being in my life and for being a also a um, positive male male influence. We I really think we need our men. We need the sacred masculine as much as the sacred feminine. You know, and we each hold those energies within us. It has really nothing to do with gender. If you have a little pee pee or a little yoni, doesn't really matter. It's, you know, it's these, these energies are within us. It's not about what's on the outside necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thank you, Mariam, and I feel the same way. And uh, I feel so much more fortunate to have found you again in this lifetime. And my yes. life is better with you in it. And I'm so honored to be able to not only support your work, but showcase your work. You do amazing thank you. work. And um, very few people are as staunch and as brave as you are. And I can I can say that, folks, knowing many more things that have never been <laughs> here on the show. And so I appreciate uh, Mariam at a level um, yes, yes. perhaps nobody can understand. So merci beaucoup, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here. This was episode uh, three here of the Quantum Woo. Join us again next week. We'll find a time here as we are re- <laughs> rehashing all of our schedule here uh, and, and rebuilding this library. But uh, I promise uh, we are going to be back uh, next week with another Quantum Woo episode and perhaps uh, with a guest as well. Mariam and I are uh, thinking of a few really, really interesting people to interview on this uh, particular series uh, for you guys. So if you have any suggestions on who and what topics uh, you want us to cover on the next Quantum Woo, please leave your comments below as you're watching this on Rerun. And Mariam and I uh, will take a look at that and see how we can work together to build the new Earth that we all deserve. Mm. Thank you so much, everyone. Merci beaucoup, Mariam. Merci à toi. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.